Hello again. Welcome to Cisco Live EMEA and welcome to Amsterdam. What a week of great engagements with customers, sellers and partners. And I'm delighted to introduce you to Joel from VQ Communications. Joel, tell me a little bit about your company. Yeah, so I'll start by telling you as to who we are. So VQ Communication is a company that's got 40 to 50 employees. 40 of them actually are engineers. And uh, we started actually a humble beginning uh, by actually delivering audio and video services around a platform called Akano. Those who've been in the industry of collaboration will have heard of it. It's, it was a very established uh, organization and they got acquired by Cisco in 2016. And then we've been a solution partner of Cisco since um, about 2020, so about three years ago. And we're very proud because in that time we actually became number three in the collaboration space in terms of the largest, third largest uh, solution partner for Cisco. And actually last quarter, we were first. So we're very That's proud excellent. of that. excellent. And forgive me, I'm probably showing off here, but I was very, very proud because it's a big achievement. We've grown very, very rapidly. We've grown year on year by almost doubling our numbers from last year. And our customers are predominantly based in the US, but also we've got customers in the Middle East. We've got customers in Europe. And we've got customers in um, New Zealand and Australia. Okay. Now we've got a presence a bit uh, predominantly in Europe, but we've also got a presence in the US where we've got uh, one of our representatives who works there and one of our sales director also moved there a couple, uh, last week actually and is going to stay okay. there for two months. So uh, the European market is one that we are focusing very heavily on. Uh, we've just recruited quite a few people. One of them is actually, an, I would say, an industry veteran. Okay. Maybe we may want to edit the veteran piece yeah, out. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. if he's going to like the veteran piece. <laughs> he's been in the industry for a very long time. He's, he's called Graham Fish. He's actually really focused on that region and really work with Cisco, with our resellers, with our end users to assist with the VQ solution. Excellent. Now, we've got to, to your question, what do we actually do? So we are uh, a solution which, uh, sorry, a, a provider which provides a solution called VQ Conference Manager, which is a software solution which essentially is very well suited for customers who've got an on-premise deployment where they've got uh, use of Cisco collaboration devices and we essentially do two things. One is we are a management layer to Cisco CMS. Mm -hmm. So essentially allow to unleash all the greatness that Cisco can deliver around the CMS products. And the other element is VQDMA, which is the replacement to Cisco TMS, where we can manage video devices. I'm sure I'm going to tell you more about this over the next few minutes, but that's what we do at a very high level. Now as to what I do here, I'm a customer success manager and my role is quite straightforward. I'm here to ensure customers who buy VQ get maximum value out of investment. So essentially understanding what they're trying to achieve and be there as part of a journey to ensure they get to where they want to get to. Okay. So updating them on what we're working on, telling them about a product release and the latest release that we work on, ensuring it's actually meeting their requirements, as well as actually listening to what it is that they want to achieve and maybe bringing this back into a product roadmap to maybe look at, hey, guys, these, this customer really would like us to consider doing this. Can we include in the product portfolio? So I'm here really to, to be the ears of a customer and feed that back also to the, to the customer base. So Cisco meeting server, very much in the on-premise space, very much from that management aspect with regard to those environments. Is there particular segments, particular regions, particular parts of the world where this kind of is important, it's, again, it's, for the, our customers out there who are listening. Yeah, so, so I think it's important to a lot of the customers who've got to on-premise diploma Cisco, as I said. Not everybody wants to move to the cloud. I think cloud is a big buzzword. Naturally. No, we yeah, think yeah. that everybody wants to cloud. The truth is, if you look at the customer base, there is a lot of segments where there's maybe some data sovereignty, some security compliance which needs to be met. There's maybe an existing investment made on Cisco where they may say, listen, we don't want to go to the cloud. Yeah. We are, um, for various reasons, we want to essentially keep our discussions, uh, our, our communication within our network. So the segments you know, can really apply to any verticals in terms of customer base. So predominantly it is federal organizations, but it can be large enterprise, it can be the legal sector, it can be education, so it's quite wide range it's to be quite honest. As well. and, yeah. and our customer base are predominantly, as I said, in the US. Mm. We've got quite a few in the European market, the Middle East also, and as I said uh, earlier, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, but we're really investing quite a lot, as I said earlier, into a European market because there's a lot of demand so, around. So, around so there's no hard and set rule. It's uh, really absolutely. customer preference and customer need at a particular point in time. Yes, yeah. you've got it. That's okay, correct. makes yes. perfect sense. Um, so with all the, you know, par or all the vendors out there, you, you did allude already with regard to uh, Akano, etc. 
it was that predominantly the reason for the relationship with Cisco and how that evolved, yeah? No, I think it was maybe a little bit towards it because Akarno got purchased, as I mentioned, in mm. 2016 by Cisco. But I think if I was to explain the reasoning behind the partnership, is it's going to sound maybe a little bit corny and a bit uh, cheesy. Corny I'm gonna, is but, good. But, but, but I'm going to give you what I think. Is that, yeah. um, Cisco is the market leader when it comes to collaboration and the products such as Cisco CMS highlights how much you can actually do when it comes to voice and video. And CMS is an incredible powerful um, platform. It's incredibly powerful. If I was to make an analogy, um, it feels like it's a Formula One engine. Mm. It's incredibly fast. It can do a lot of very, very clever stuff, but you need something to ensure you get the most out of it. So CIOS as being essentially you know, the, the brakes, the accelerator, the, the, the steering wheel. So going back to your point about why the partnership best of breed. Got yeah. it. Cisco CMS is an excellent product mm. and we can complement through what we've done historically with Arcano, but we can do the same with Cisco CMS. So to unleash all the capabilities it can do. Okay. You know, and there's so many releases, every time there's a new one, we work with you guys at Cisco to ensure that the release made actually deliverable in an easy, simple way for users to get the most out of it. So. That's really why we, 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 we partnered, I think, with Cisco. Is it just made sense, quite frankly. Okay, yeah. And, and it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer, exactly. Yeah. And we've partnered up, like I said, for three years. We haven't looked back. Excellent. You know, we, we, we've grown Good and grown. Good to hear. And it's, and it's a very, very successful relationship. Good to hear. From a technology perspective, you know, obviously we're, technology is always evolving and, and moving forward. Um, you know, the buzzwords you hear today around uh, this event is hybrid work, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. What are you seeing? Mm. What are you seeing in that area? Now, I mm. suppose hybrid work is one thing, but on the artificial intelligence side of things, what are you guys seeing? Yeah, I mean, we don't actually see tons of applications. It's funny, I was talking to my colleague earlier about artificial intelligence. I don't think that where we operate is necessarily relevant to artificial intelligence. What is, however, is that despite there's a lot of demand around the on-premise and we are growing, like I said, we double our numbers year on year, is that there's still some customers who may want to make use of the cloud in some circumstances. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some swear words there, so forgive Please. me, that column, just for a second, I'm gonna use maybe a few swear words. But let's say you are a customer who's maybe using Microsoft Teams. Then, I know, I know, I did <laughs> warn you, I did warn you, I did warn you, but if you're using Microsoft Teams, but you want to ensure you get great video quality, you want to ensure that your traffic of your video and voice calls remain your own network. Mm. Use Cisco CMS, it makes sense, mm. right? So what we can actually do is to ensure that if you're using Teams and you and I are having a chat, say, hey Joel, you know, we need to talk about this very, very important, very sensitive subject, then I can actually essentially through VQ communication send you a link through a plugin to say, let's join on the Cisco CMS. I want to see you, I want to see you sharp and good quality, I want it to be stable. I want it to be on network. I want to maintain all this data governance, this security. We can do this. So when your question around you know, the, the trends we see is accepting there is some companies you may want for some reason or another use Teams, but we can still bring the Cisco greatness into these environments. Of course, we live in the real world. Mm. Customers make choices based on the technology that they need for their organization. Yes. So that's yes. just reality. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, one thing that people will always ask about, what are the typical use cases that are addressed by VQ Communications? There's quite a few, so um, I'm going to try to, to, to make it quite succinct, but there's the use case where we see actually customers wanting to empower their users to self-serve. Mm -hmm. What I mean by this is having users within an organization which essentially want to share all their own meetings and manage their own meetings. Mm -hmm. It's important to make this process simple, so we will do this through the use of Outlook plugin or Outlook add-ins, or even the VQ Metro app where essentially people with two clicks can schedule their own meetings. So that's the first use case, people wanting to schedule their own meetings. Then the second one is actually where you've got a team of operators, what we call self-service, concierge, white glove kind of model, where mm. someone is maybe very senior, doesn't want to get involved in scheduling event calls, they will call their team and say, hey, I've got a call tomorrow at 11, I want you to schedule the call, but make sure that call goes well. Okay. And with this, it's really important to be obviously able to schedule the call on behalf of the user, but to maybe be very specific at what is required during that call. So it may be that you and I are doing a presentation to a group, only us want to be so shown on video and to be heard, but everybody else to be muted. Okay. And then we've got this gentleman there in the corner, he wants to share the content, but we can't. Okay. We need to make it very bespoke yeah, okay. in, in that instance. So operate. The third one is um, the analytics use case. So people wanting to actually ensure they have data across what is actually happening in this call. How many people are on the call? Mm -hmm. How long did the call last? How many meetings are we having per day? Mm. Fourth one, troubleshooting. We're having calls, but you call me and say, my call wasn't very good. Uh, I couldn't Why? see Joel very well. It was pixelated. Mm. Why? So that's another use case. 
And lastly, the, the, the other use case is really around devices. There's a growth in demand of, of devices across the globe. More and more devices, the cost price have gone down. So we see them in, more, in, in boardrooms, meeting rooms, much more. So it brings a, a challenge, which is how do you manage these video devices at scale? So again, that's the last use case where we can essentially provide an end-to-end -end solution to deploy these devices, to actually configure these devices, and ensure that they're operating as they should, to monitor the activity around these devices. So that's essentially the different use case that we, a, a, we deliver. A sizable use case block. Yes, yes, yes ab absolutely. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, where do you see your portfolio evolving? What do you have on the radar with regard to kind of the next thing? So yeah, to speak? So, so, so that's, that's a great question. I think a bit more of the same, and we haven't spoken too much of the use cases, mm -hmm. but we, 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 we essentially deliver a solution which is suited for people who want to schedule their own meetings. Mm. They, it's a solution to allow people to ask a team of operators to schedule meetings for their behalf for very mission critical calls. We can do analytics on these calls mm. through CMS, through Expressway. We can troubleshoot and understand where the potential issues are when we are having calls. So we're looking to deliver additional functionality to allow this. So every release we work on, latest one being 4.3, is to essentially enhance the user friendliness and the set of capability around this. So more of the same, making things easier, more powerful for operators, more analytics, mm. more troubleshooting capability. A big focus for us, however, is VQDMA. This, an announcement has been made by Cisco, it was in August last year, around Cisco ending the sale of Cisco TMS and ending the support around that product. And it's been a product which, quite frankly, everybody knew was going to go end of life and end of support, so it was no surprise. We worked with Cisco for about three years to ensure we had a product which was going to replace it. So to answer your question, where do we see the new development coming into? More around the meeting services capability, more around it being a replacement to Cisco TMS is where we focus okay. on. With more around the cloud integration to uh, being a, quick, a, a key focus over the coming uh, months and years. Excellent. Um, before I conclude, as um, one asked the question about where you find more information about VQ communications, um, you know, if a customer out there or a partner or even a developer has some questions and queries and wants to learn a little bit more about what you guys provide to your customer base. Yes. What's the best place to go to? What's the best, I, I know obviously we're at events here, so it's, it's yes. pretty easy, but beyond that, the, the general places where you would point a customer to. Okay, I'll, I'll quickly point out to the events. Obviously we're here today and yeah. we, we, we've been working with Cisco, so we're at Cisco Live Europe. We'll be at Cisco Live uh, Las Vegas in June also. Uh, but in terms of documentation, in terms of what we offer, there's obviously our website, vqcoms.com. Uh, there is also the Ask VQ WebEx space, so if you want to join that space, you can actually ask all sorts of questions. And that's public space? And that's public, public space, space, absolutely yeah. available. So yeah, anybody, yeah, right, thank you. Anybody absolutely. out there? Anyone who wants to join, you please join us. Yeah. Ask VQ WebEx space. Now there's, uh, as I said, website, Ask VQ space, info at vqcoms.com is the other one no. uh, in terms of getting a hold of us and, and engage with us. So these are the various platforms. There's also LinkedIn, of course, like every company out there yeah, will use LinkedIn yeah, yeah, as a means of communication. It's so. somewhat of an obvious answer to the question, but just make sure that people are aware. Exactly, yeah, yes, yeah, on LinkedIn yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, in conclusion, you know, uh, Joel, thanks very much. Uh, it's been great having you here at the event. Um, thanks for sponsoring. Um, really great pleasure to meet you, and to the audience out there. Uh, you know, what a great, what a great event here at Cisco Live Amsterdam. Uh, hope you enjoyed this short discussion with our partner and colleague and friend in VQ Communications. And um, follow those links that Joel outlined. For more information or at the next trade show you attend, call over to their boot uh, when you have a Cisco event. Thanks very much and talk again real soon. <laughs>